Rebuilding a Stuart score engine, part two. Mounting the sole plate to the box bed, fitting the connecting rods to the crankshaft, bolting the main bearings in place and making sure that everything rotates smoothly after fitting the crossheads and piston rods. All the 7BA bolts were rusty and I had to clean them up before fitting them to the engine. This all adds to the time, but I could not fit rusty bolts. I used a rotary abrasive wheel in my bench-mounted Proxon motor tool. These are really useful things to have. They don't remove a lot of metal, but they're really good at cleaning up small parts like this. You have to make sure that you have a firm grip on the parts that you're cleaning, otherwise this abrasive wheel will throw the parts around the workshop and the smaller nuts and bolts are just gone. One end of the sole plate is held by two bolts and the other end uses two studs with nuts on the end. This is a centre main bearing and it's very dirty so I'm going to give it a clean before I put it in place. At this stage I would just like to say that the sole plate painting is not as bad as it seems. It's due to the extremely bright LED video lighting. Well, apart from one part where I touched it when it was wet with my thumb. As I assemble this engine, I'm sure there will be more marks appearing on the sole plate, which I will touch in with green paint in due course. It's now time to permanently fit the connecting rods to the crankshaft. Before going ahead with the job, take a look at the parts and make sure they've been disassembled correctly, because when you put them back in place, they need to be exactly where they were in the first place. The crankshaft is singularly the most important part of a steam engine, if you get this wrong, then the whole thing will not work properly. And before assembly comes the oiling. I find the best way to do it is to assemble the parts loosely in the places that I think they should go. And then, if all is well, tighten the bolts. But do not over tighten the bolts. This is vital. One down and one to go, but first of all, the oiling. I cannot stress how important this is, and don't use machine oil. It's too thin. This is compounded bearing oil for steam engines, little ones and big ones. I use this all the time. In this clip I'm showing the fitting of the two bolts that hold one of the bearing blocks in place. You will note that they've been cleaned first like the others. And once again, do not over tighten these small 7BA bolts. In this clip I'm fitting the other outer main bearing at this side. I noticed that the lower half of the centre bearing had moved out of position. I rectified this before going any further. And now, just for a change, one more time, here are the rusty bolts before I cleaned them, and here they are, being bolted in place. And one more time, do not over-tighten these bolts. Even if they don't shear off, steel is harder than gunmetal, and the gunmetal will distort, and you don't want that. If you're worried about them coming loose, then use some nut lock, and by nut lock I don't mean Loctite 601, that's a retainer. Nut lock is useful for holding nuts and bolts in place, so they don't vibrate loose. However, I seldom use nut lock. I find if I get the tension on the bolts just right, they don't work loose. Here I'm fitting the bolts that hold the centre bearing in place, and now it's time to find out whether everything is aligned properly. The easiest way to do this is to rotate the crankshaft with your fingers. A better way of doing it is to temporarily fasten the flywheel to the crankshaft and rotate that. You can sort of get a better feel for how good the fits are. I know this is not a new engine and it has been run, but it's been disturbed, so a lot of oil is essential to make sure all the parts re-bed in their correct positions. And don't forget the crossheads in the trunk guides, they need oil too. Before I go, I want to show you this. I thought I would buy some parts from Stuart, and once I received the parts, I really wish I hadn't bought them. So this is what I bought. I bought a 10H valve chest cover that didn't fit the vintage 10H. This is for a modern 10H, which is a slightly different size to the older one. Never mind, it will come in useful for something else at a later date. And these are the gaskets. I was appalled at the cost. Three pounds per gasket. That is extortionate. I've just bought some gaskets for my Land Rover, and they were cheaper and much bigger. 
And once again, here's an action replay. £34.90 and £4.90 of that was for the shipping by weight. Anyway, I've bought them now, but I will never buy any again. I will do what I normally do, cut my own from a large sheet of gasket material. Here I'm fitting the crosshead pins. These are slot-headed, but they're OK because the slot is inside the metal, so it's supported as you tighten it. And once again, I need to oil the crossheads as well. Here's the one at the other side. These are specially made pins. That's why it seemed to go in and then suddenly went all the way in because the thread on the end is smaller than the diameter of the pin. There now follows an oiling frenzy. I really do need to make sure that none of the parts in this mechanism are dry. Too much is better than too little. Via the medium of video, I cannot convey how good this feels. Everything is really free, but not a rattle fit. The engineer who made this engine was a very competent machinist. This is a good way to test the engine. You can feel for any tight spots, but there aren't any. And that's it for the second part of the score assembly. All that's left is for me to say stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.